Hello my dear students hope you are in good health and spirits uh, and uh, I welcome all of you uh, again on this uh, online learning platform and we are discussing uh, the atomic and molecular spectroscopy uh, in this uh, third lecture we will discuss a very important topic uh, that is uh, the Redberg constant and how these uh, Redberg constant value it varies with the change in the nuclear mass and then we will drive the relation of this Redberg constant uh, for different different energy spectral series we will drive for Lyman series and how these Redberg constant it is dependent upon the value of uh, this uh, wavelength and after that we will discuss uh, about the positronium ion and about the helium ion and then we will compare the value of this positronium ion with the hydrogen atom and then we will discuss uh, the numerical problems uh, we will discuss those numericals which are uh, coming uh, from uh, GATE, CSIR, JEST and uh, TIFR competition examination in previous years so let us start our lecture so our first topic of today's lecture is that is the variation in Redberg constant due to finite nuclear mass. So first of all I would like to explain about what is Redberg constant. So the Redberg constant so it represents the limiting value of highest wave number or we now know that wave number it is inversely proportional to wavelength or you can say it is the shortest wavelength So that we have already discussed in the series limit of any proton or any photon that can be emitted from hydrogen atom or hydrogen like atoms and we generally drive the wave number that is the inverse of wavelength and whose value is r infinity 1 over nf square minus 1 over ni square and it is also dependent upon the atomic number of uh, the atom and we, the value of this Redberg constant that is for the shortest wavelength or you can say for the series limit we generally represent it m e raised to power 4 e oxygen naught square at c q and for this shortest wavelength the value of this Redberg constant that is for a infinite nuclei that is of the order of 10 is to power 7 meter inverse and you can check from this series and this is the series limit that is the value of the series limit for the Lyman series that is we have already derived it is around 911 and similarly the value of this wavelength it increases with an increase in these energy levels and how we can drive the value of this Redberg constant so the value of Redberg constant for a infinite nucleus mass so that is of the order of 10 is to power plus 7 meter inverse and this value for a finite nucleus mass it decreases so the value of Redberg constant it decreases with the decrease in nuclear mass and this we will drive now so derivation of Redberg constant now if we suppose that so this is our infinite energy level series and we represent it as the initial level and this is for 
our final state that is suppose it is 1 and we generally call it as the Lyman series limit. So we will first of all drive the value of Redberg constant for Lyman series limit and then we will compare its value with Balmer series, Pastian series, Buffand series and Bracket series. And so the value of this initial energy state that is infinite, the final energy state it is equal to 1 that is our Lyman alpha series. So the wavelength it is 1 over lambda that is r infinity 1 over nf square over ni square and the value of z that is for hydrogen atom it is equal to 1. So z is equal to 1. So here z square it comes out to be 1. So this becomes r infinity final is 1 over 1 square minus 1 over infinity square 1 over infinity is 0 so 1 over lambda that is equal to r infinity so we all know the value of this lambda that is for the Lyman series it is of the order of 911 and from that we can calculate the value of Redberg constant that is 1 over 911 into 10 is to power 10 per meter. So when we calculate it, it is coming of the order of 1.097 into 10 is to power 7 meter inverse. So this is the maximum value of Redberg constant. So when any spectral line series which is falling from infinite to first energy state. So that is the maximum value of series and from here I would like to mention that the Redberg constant it is inversely proportional to wavelength. So the value of Redberg constant it decreases with increase in wavelength. So the value of R it decreases with increase in wavelength so similarly we can also calculate so the value of 1 over lambda that is for Lyman series this we generally represent as r infinity over nf square and for Balmer series we all know that the value of this nf that is equal to 2 and ni that is equal to infinity and similarly by putting the value in the previous equation you can calculate the value of Redberg constant for Balmer series and it is coming of the order of 4 over lambda and similarly for Pastian series where nf is 3 and from this equation you can calculate the value of Redberg constant it is coming of the order of 9 over lambda and similarly for bracket series where nf that is equal to fourth energy spectral series and the Redberg constant value it is 16 over lambda and similarly for profound series So therefore, as there is a change in wavelength for each energy spectral series, so the value of this Redberg constant, it is changing with respect to wavelength. So therefore, for profound series, we know that the value of NF that is equal to 5 and it is coming of the order of 25 over lambda. Now, 
we will do some examples of uh, the change in Redberg constant for helium and for hydrogen. So first of all, I would like to explain how this Redberg constant, it changes for a finite nuclear mass. So until now, we are talking about the variation of Redberg constant for an infinite nuclear mass. Now we will drive the variation in Redberg constant due to finite nuclear mass. So for infinite nuclear mass, the value of Redberg constant which we have derived that is m e raised to power 4 a x i line naught square h c q into c. So let us say this is equation number 1 and for finite nuclear mass now suppose we are having a nuclear mass whose value is m so the Redberg constant for that particular finite nuclear mass so it is equal to mu e raised to power 4 where mu is the reduced mass for that particular nuclei over 8 xi line naught square h cube into C. So mu the reduced mass which we can calculate that is M into capital M over capital M plus small m. Here M is the mass of the electron which are present around that particular atom and this is our nuclear mass. So this is our electron. So let us say this is equation number 2. Now we divide these two equations. So from here we get a equation R infinity that is for infinite nuclear mass over Redberg constant for a finite nucleus mass that is Rm. So it comes out to be 8 xi line naught square h cube over c into mu xi line naught 4 over 8 xi line naught square h cube over c. So these get cancelled. So what we are left with is m over mu. So the value of this Redberg constant, so putting the value of this reduced mass so that is m into capital M over m plus m so it comes out to be m into m plus m over m into capital M so that is equal to m over m plus 1 So this Redberg constant for two different nuclei, so that is of the order of M over capital M plus 1. Or you can say, so the Redberg constant of a finite nuclei that is R infinity over 1 plus M over capital M. So from this equation you can clearly see that the value of Redberg constant for a finite nucleus mass whose value is less as compared to the value of this Redberg constant for infinite nucleus mass. So Rm is less than r infinity in all the cases so the value of rm it is different for different atom
so far a finite in infinite nucleus mass which we have derived so whose value is maximum that is of the order of 1.097 into 10 is to power 7 meter inverse or you can write it in centimeter 1097 centimeter inverse <coughs> and this is for infinite nuclear mass Now let us solve the value of this uh, Radberg constant for hydrogen atom. So for hydrogen atom, if we have to calculate, now for hydrogen atom, the ratio of m over m, that is generally 1 over 1836 times, because we know that the mass of proton it is quite heavier that is of the order of 1836 times the mass of electron so here this is mass of electron this is mass of proton so the value of rm if we put it in the equation that is 1 plus small m over capital M and when we drive it here rm that is equal to rh that is for hydrogen atom so the value of Radberg constant for hydrogen atom it is coming out to be 109677 centimeter inverse and when you relate these two values so this is for hydrogen atom and this is for infinite nucleus mass and you can check that so there is a change in Redberg constant so here the value is 109740 and here the value is 109677 so the value of Redberg constant for hydrogen atom it is less as compared to the Radberg constant for infinite nuclear mass. Now if I draw a graph so if I take here this side the mass number and on this side if I take the value of Radberg constant And this is the maximum value of Redberg constant, so that is for infinite nucleus mass 1096740 centimeter inverse. And for hydrogen, so here it is having this value. So for deuterium 1H2, it is having this value. And the trend of this graph, it is something like this so here it is helium here it is lithium here it is oxygen so you can check that as the atomic mass number is increasing the value of this Radberg constant it is increasing and it is approaching more and more towards the value of r infinity so for a lighter atomic nuclei so 1h1 that is for hydrogen atom the Radberg constant has a lowest value and for deuterium a deuterium for 1h2 it is having larger value for helium it is slightly greater for oxygen it is more greater so from this trend of graph we can say if we increase mass number the Radberg constant approaches
more and more closely to r infinity now let us calculate the redberg constant for helium atom and from here you can also get a more clear result so far helium atom it is r infinity over 1 plus m over mass of helium now we know that mass of helium so that is four time the mass of hydrogen atom so this equation becomes r infinity over 1 plus m over four time the mass of hydrogen atom but we know that m over mh that is of the order of 1836 so for helium this equation becomes r infinity over 1 plus 1 over 4 into 1836 and when you calculate it so it comes out to be 109740 into 4 into 1836 over 4 into 1836 plus 1 that is of the order of 109740 into 0.9998 so that is equal to 109725 so again this is the maximum value that is for infinite so this is coming out to be for the helium atom again this value is less as compared to the redberg constant for a infinite nuclear mass now but the value of this redberg constant for helium it is greater as compared to the redberg constant for hydrogen atom so this you can check from this graph so similarly sometimes there is a question that is for the deuterium atom so which you also known as the heavy hydrogen which we generally represent as 1h2 so the redberg constant for deuterium it is again you can calculate 1 plus m over md so the mass of deuterium it is two time the mass of hydrogen because it has one neutron and one proton so the value of rd it comes out to be r infinity 1 plus m over 2 times mass of hydrogen so putting these value m over mh so this we know that it is 1836 so this comes out to be 109740 plus 1 over 2 into 1836 so the redberg constant for deuterium atom it is coming out to be 109707 inverse so again the value of this redberg constant it is less as compared to redberg constant for a finite infinite nuclear mass now before moving to the next topic i would like to explain uh, some important point about the positronium atom so positronium atom so positronium atom is a system consisting of 
an electron and its antiparticle so that is the positron now the antiparticle of electron that is positron so we generally represent electron as e negative while the positron we represent as e positive so what is the major difference between these two particles now both these particles so they have having same mass but different charge so electron which is having a negative charge while the positron which is having a positive charge apart from that so both these particles so they belong to fermions so which is having half integral spin now what is this positronium system so let us say this is our nucleus so this is the electron which is present in the hydrogen atom so hydrogen atom which we generally represent as 1h1 so which is having one electron one proton and zero neutron because we know that so here it is represented as the atomic number so the z that is representing the value of number of protons present in a nuclei while the n represent the number of neutrons so which is a minus z so for hydrogen so there is no neutron so similarly for helium so there are two electrons so which are present in the first atomic orbital so it has two electron two proton and two neutrons so from this you can also calculate and similarly for positronium atom so this is one electron and this is the positive part particle so we generally represent it as one electron and one positron so because they both exist in pairs so positronium is a system consisting of an electron and its antiparticle that is positron now how we can identify the velocity of uh, these positronium atom we can identify the radberg constant uh, what will be the reduced mass this positronium so let mass of electron that we generally represent as me which is m and we know that both the particle and antiparticle so they are having same mass so mass of positronium that is also equal to mass of electron so so mass of electron that is equal to mass of positron so positron is a two body problem is a two body problem
Now, if we convert it into a one-body problem, so by calculating its reduced mass, so in order to solve our numerical problem, so the reduced mass, that is the sum of these two masses which are present in this positronium atom, mass of electron, 1 over mass of positron. So both the masses, they are equal. So 1 over mu, that is 1 over m plus 1 over m. So the value of this 1 over mu that is 2 over m. So the mass, reduced mass of this positronium atom, so that is m by 2. So this is a very important result. So the mass of positronium atom So we can write it as PS. So that is the half mass of hydrogen atom. Now we can compare this positronium atom with hydrogen atom. So we can compare its energy, we can compare its velocity, so the relation, so I will write in shortcut. So the energy of hydrogen atom, so which we have already derived, so energy of hydrogen atom, so that is minus R infinity Hc over N square. So you can check from this formula where the value of this Redberg constant so that is 8 xylene not square h cube c so eh that is minus m raised to power m e raised to power 4 h c over 8 xylene not square h cube c into n square so this eh that is minus 13.6 over n square electron volt so that is for hydrogen atom and similarly for positronium atom so that is for positronium atom the value of this energy that is minus mu e raised to power 4 8 xylen not square h square n square and the value of this EP, putting this value, it comes out to be EH by 2. So therefore, the energy for this positronium atom, that is half that of hydrogen atom. And for each energy spectral limit, you can calculate the energy of this positronium atom, and that is different for different spectral energy limit. So this relation is quite important uh, for numerical point of view. And similarly you can drive the relation of velocities. So velocity of electron in hydrogen atom so that we have already derived that is Zd square over 2nh epsilon naught. So from this formula we can say that the velocity of electron it is independent of mass. And it depends only on number of orbit n in which that electron present is. 
so similarly for positronium so the velocity will be same so therefore velocity of electron in hydrogen atom and velocity of positronium in uh, a, a velocity of electron in positronium atom it is the same for the same orbital electron because it does not depend upon the mass and similarly you can calculate the radius for this both hydrogen and positronium atom so radius for hydrogen which we have derived that is n square h square epsilon naught over m pi z d square again it is depended upon the electron mass so radius for positronium that is n square h square epsilon naught over mu pi z d square where mu we know that is m e by 2 so the value of this positronium radius that is two time the hydrogen radius so what does it means radius of positronium atom is two times of the radius of hydrogen atom so similarly you can calculate or compare the value of the radberg constants so radberg constant here i will derive in this portion so the radberg constant for hydrogen that is m e raised to power 4 over 8 epsilon naught square h cube c and as you can see it is dependent upon this mass so the radberg constant for positronium atom so this is the result for radberg constant so radberg constant for positronium it is mu e raised to power 4 8 epsilon naught square h cube c again the value of this mu that is half of the mass of hydrogen atom so the radberg constant for positronium atom so it is half of radberg constant for hydrogen atom so these are the results of radberg constant so based on these values we will solve some of the numerical problems so our first numerical is the wavelength of a spectral line in positronium atom which corresponding to lyman alpha line of hydrogen atom is so this is the question of csir 2010 examination so for alpha line so that is the first line of lyman series so n that is final that is 1 and initial that is 2 so radberg equation it becomes 1 over lambda 1 over h 1 over nf square over 1 over ni square so 1 over lambda h that is for the hydrogen atom it comes out to be 3h rh over 4 because nf that is 1 so this 2 square it becomes 4 so that is rh 1 minus 1 over 4 so that is 3 rh over 
So this is let us say equation number one. Now for the positronium atom, one over lambda p s that is Radberg constant for positronium atom one over one square over one over two square. So the Radberg constant we know that for positronium atom it is the half of the hydrogen atom. So from that lambda p s so that comes out to be three Radberg constant for positronium over four. So putting the value of this r p s in this equation, so this becomes three by four into one over two times the Radberg constant for hydrogen atom. So this we can write three r h over four. So this 3R H over 4, so that is our equation number 1, so that is equal to 1 by 2 into 1 over wavelength for hydrogen atom. So therefore the wavelength for positronium ion it is 2 times the wavelength for hydrogen atom. Now the wavelength for positronium ion so that is for the alpha line series so that we all know we have derived in our previous results so that is of the order of 1 to 1 5 angstrom or you can also calculate from this equation number 1 by putting the values and it comes out to be 1 to 1 5 angstrom that is for the hydrogen atom for alpha line and therefore for positronium it is two times the wavelength of the hydrogen atom and it comes out to be baro duna chovi chovi so three angstrom and this is close to the value of this b so the correct option is option b so next question is an accelerated beam of electron bombarded on a sample having hydrogen atom and the first line of Pastian series is omitted. The electron must have been accelerated through a minimum potential difference of. Now what the question is saying is, so there is a electron which is being bombarded by hydrogen atom and hydrogen atom they are at rest when we bombard these electrons to this hydrogen atom and so this is one. So these electrons, so they get accelerated and reach to the value of n that is equal to four. And the electron must have been accelerated through a minimum potential difference. Now we all know that the Pastian series, so for Pastian series, the value of n that is equal to four. So therefore the energy difference E4 minus E1 that we can calculate that is the EV0 where EV0 is the electrostatic potential which is being generated between these two energy levels and the value of E4 that is we can calculate from the Bohr energy formula that is 4 square minus for first energy line it is equal to one square electron volt that is equal to EV naught. So this comes out to be minus 13.6 over 16 plus 13.6 electron volt that is equal to EV naught. So this E, e get cancelled and this comes out to be minus 0 0.85 plus 13.6 so that is equal to V naught so which comes out to be 12.8 volt so this is the value that the electron it must get accelerated at a potential that is the minimum potential is of the order of 12.8 
12.8 volt so next numerical is consider the spectral lines resulting from the transition from n2 to n1 state in the atom and ions calculate the shortest wavelength which will be produced in which case now we know that when there is a transition from 2 to first state so we know the relation that is 1 over lambda that is r infinity 1 over nf square 1 over ni square into z square so therefore if we compare all these four values so far hydrogen atom so there is one proton and one electron and for deuteron atom there is two times one the mass of one proton and one neutron and there is one electron and for single ionized helium so that is for helium plus atom so there are four mp and there are electrons and similarly for double ionized helium atom so there are six janiki three neutrons and three protons so they are present now if you can relate that the value of this one over lambda so it is directly proportional to z square so 1 over lambda is larger when z is larger so what does it mean so the wavelength it is inversely proportional to the atomic number so what does it mean the shortest wavelength is produced with those atom which is having high atomic number so shortest wavelength is produced by helium plus ion because it is having high atomic number so therefore the correct option is doubly ionized lithium atom so moving towards our last numerical so this we have already derived and this comes in the Tata Institute of Fundamental Research exam in 2013. Now what they have said is velocity of an electron in the ground state of hydrogen atom it is VH and if VP the velocity of an electron in the positronium atom then drive the relation. Now we know that the velocity formula that is z d square over 2 n h oxyla naught and it is independent of mass it does not depend on mass so therefore the value of the velocity of electron in the positronium ion it is same for the value of electron which is present in the hydrogen atom for a particular orbital so therefore our correct option is option A so this is all about our today's lecture and hope you have enjoyed our lecture and if you have any query so you can provide your review for this course so by giving your valuable review and you can ask any query by writing your question in the comment box or you can write any doubt then we can discuss or provide you the best solution so till then goodbye see you in the next lecture